So question one is looking at asking you to find dy by dx, so differentiating three different functions. So the first one is a product of two functions. So it's the product of this function here, 4x plus 1 all to the power of 3, and sine 2x there. So when we are looking at the product of two functions, we are going to be using the product rule to help us um, differentiate this. So product rule says that dy by dx is equal to u times the differential of v plus v times the differential of u. First times the differential of the second plus the second times the differential of the first. So it doesn't actually matter which order we identify our u and our v functions in. So we will call the first one u, so 4x plus 1 cubed. And our second one we will call v, so sine 2x. Now, when we come to differentiate u, we're going to find du by dx, but within the definition there, I've called that u dashed. Now, to actually differentiate this, we need to use the chain rule. So if you're not happy with doing this without chain rule, it's almost worth kind of starting again, putting this in a box somewhere out the way, because we're going to reuse the variable u, which could make this slightly confusing. So if we call this function y now, so all we're doing here is um, just showing how we're going to differentiate this. So we'll use the chain rule. So we're going to say y equals u to the 3 and u equals 4x plus 1. So then when we find dy by du, that's 3u squared. And this the second part, du by dx, is equal to 4. So the whole thing is going to differentiate to 4 times by 3 using this u here. So not the u in the original question, which is why I've taken this somewhere completely different. So the solution for u dashed is going to be, so that's our u dashed down here, is going to be 12 lots of 4x plus 1 squared. Okay, so that's what's that's the differential of this one. So some of you might be able to do that one without having to write out the chain rule. But if you need to, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the fact that we tend to use the variable u, which makes this slightly more confusing. We're then going to differentiate v, so v dashed. So we should remember that sine differentiates to cosine. If you're not sure on that, try to remember this diagram. So sine x to cos x to minus sine x to minus cos x. So if we go around clockwise, that's how these functions differentiate. And if we went round anti-clockwise, that would tell us how they integrate. So this one is going to be 2 sine differentiates to cos 2x. So to finish off this question, and it is quite a lot of work just for the two marks there, we then need to substitute everything we've got back into this formula that we wrote down here. So we've got 4 lots, sorry, 4x plus 1 cubed times v dashed, so times by 2 cos 2x just tend to put the uh, put any numbers at the front here just makes it look a little tidier and then we've got v times by u dashed so again we're going to have 12 just going to do this in the other order to make it look nicer so 12 4x plus 1 squared all of that multiplied by sine 2x now you could try to spend lots of time tidying this up but that's not actually a problem at all this would be absolutely fine as your final solution. It's only two marks and we do need to get moving on to part B. So part B then, uh, we've been given something which is a quotient, which is something over something else, um, a division, and we've been asked to show that it comes to a certain value. So the first thing we're going to need is the quotient rule. So there's the quotient rule from our formula book. Um, f of x and g of x is how the function is listed so the best thing to do even though we did use u and v previously is to use the same uh, same uh, notation that they have so f of x is 2x squared plus 3 and g of x is the bottom the denominator 3x squared plus 4 so nothing particularly tricky in the differential in the differentiation here so this one goes to 4x and g dashed of x will go to 6x. 
and then it's just a case of substituting into this formula. And this formula is a bit more, um, takes a little bit more care, and the order must be right. So we're doing f of x times g of x. So 4x lots of 3x squared plus 4. Uh, subtract f of x times g dashed of x. So I'm just going to I'm going to change the order here to get the smaller number on the outside. Uh, so 6x and 2x squared plus 3. And all of that is being divided by g of x squared. So g of x is 3x squared plus 4. And that's squared. So looking at what we're looking to find here, we're trying to show that the numerator can be can be written as p of x. So some constant times by x and the denominator we've got right. So what we need to do is just use our algebra skills to try and get this as a single pat single term in x. So expanding each of the brackets we're going to get 12x cubed plus 16x minus 12x cubed minus 18x. You just be careful you're multiplying by minus 6x both those terms there and that's still all over 3x squared plus 4 squared. So we should notice that we've got a positive 12x squared x cubed sorry and a negative 12x cubed. So those two things are going to cancel each other out leaving me 16x minus 18x all over 3x squared plus 4 all squared. And that then will simplify to minus 2x over 3x squared plus 4 all squared. So we can deduce that p is minus 2. And just going back with the question as well, giving ourselves a bit of room to see what we're doing here. p is a constant. It doesn't need to be a positive constant. It can't be. It's minus 2. And that would be our final solution there for this quotient rule question. So on to part C, uh, part C then, I've just put the answer to B up here, just because we are going to refer back to that in a moment. We're given that Y equals ln of what we've just differentiated, 2X squared plus 3 over 3X squared plus 4. So this is actually your chain rule question, although we've already done chain rule in part A, we no need to do chain rule again. So we're going to say Y equals ln U where u is equal to 2x squared plus 3 over 3x squared plus 4. So differential of u, dy by du here, sorry, with um, differential of y, we're differentiating ln u, ln u is going to be 1 over u, and we're differentiating u here now. So that we have done in the previous question. So that comes to minus 2 over 3x squared plus 4 all squared. Obviously, if you didn't spot that, you got an awful lot more repeated work ahead of you. So how does the chain work? We then multiply these two things together. What is u? u is this bottom one. So we're actually going to write this as 1 over 2x squared plus 3 over 3x squared plus 4, which is the same as saying 3x squared plus 4 divided by 2x squared plus 3. Okay, and if we're not happy with that step, you need to do a little bit more research with your division of fractions. So dy by du times, so sorry, dy by dx is then found by doing dy by du multiplied by du by dx. That is the definition of the chain rule. So we're going to have 3x squared plus 4 over 2x squared plus 3 multiplied by minus 2 over 3x squared plus 4 squared. Now there's no reason in this question, it doesn't ask us in any format to simplify this, but the best way to then produce this solution would be to do some simplification. We can see that we've got a repeated 3x squared plus 4 and a 3x squared plus 4 squared. So one of the, the squared is going to cancel with the top one here. So we're going to be left with minus 2 over 2x squared plus 3 times by 3x squared plus 4, which is 
um, a little bit more work. There's no reason why you can't leave it like that because it doesn't ask you to write it in its simplest form or anything, but this is a much more neat mathematical solution to that question uh, one part C.